Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here on the west coast of Canada where we are seven hours into the new year 2022 which means that pretty much everyone else is. So happy new year to all of you. I hope that 2022 is off to a great start and I hope you have a fantastic, successful, healthy and happy year ahead of you. Welcome Shamshina. Hi my one. Hello Simran. Hi Anton. Nice to see many students in this class. Students, we are looking at an IELTS speaking part one, then nine answers to questions. I will be teaching you some strategy giving you tips on how to give those high band scores on your upcoming IELTS exam and we are going to also do some practice. I'm going to call some of you. We're going to uh, do some questions and answers just like in the real exam. I will give you score estimates and feedback. Uh, students, this lesson is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Check us out there. For the general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com. And on both of these websites right now, we have a very, very special discount. It's a 30% discount code to start off the new year, but it's only for five days. So the code is IPASS2022. And um, it's for five days only, so use it on our websites as soon as you get the chance. Um, here is our academic IELTS website here at aehelp.com. Click this red button to join the premium package. And when you do that, when you click that red button, it'll ask you to use the coupon code. Enter the coupon code here and you'll get that discount. So the code is IPASS2022. Continue and you'll get that discount. Um, the prices are a bit different depending on where you are in the world, but the course really does not cost a lot, so it's well worth it, especially with that discount. This is our general IELTS website here at gieltshelp.com. Again, click this red button to join the premium package there. Hi, Carolina. Welcome to our chat moderator. I can see lots of new uh, members and students joining in. Go Kyren is saying, starting a new year by learning IELTS on A Help. That's a good way to start the new year. Yeah, so good on you. All right, everyone. Um, to get our apps, and our apps will link to the websites. If you purchase the full website, you get the full app as well. Um, so that's uh, the app is Academic IELTS Help or General IELTS Help in your app store. Follow us on Instagram. IELTS underscore A help and G IELTS help. Uh, IELTS underscore A help is for academic. G IELTS help is for general. You can get vocabulary, questions, tips, and our schedule on Instagram. If you have questions about the IELTS or about English, you can send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. That's my name at aehelp.com. And you can get our books from Amazon. Uh, AE helps academic IELTS and GE helps uh, general IELTS. So if you want to just get some practice exams, you can do that as well. Uh, students, uh, this is the last class for this week. Then we have a break on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And as usual, I am back on... Uh, Wednesday uh, with more speaking and then a full week of learning lives classes and you can get this schedule on our YouTube channel on our uh, posts so make sure to subscribe and get those posts okay without further ado everyone let's get into um, some IELTS speaking part one questions okay so IELTS speaking interview face-to-face. -face. You're sitting there these days, you're wearing a mask because of COVID, and you're sitting face-to-face -face with the examiner. You have to go to your speaking interview at least 20 minutes before for registration. However, I say you should get there at least one hour 
before your speaking interview starts. There are candidates who arrive early and you can practice your speaking with them. They're very happy if you ask them to practice. So if you find another person like yourself that's waiting for their speaking exam, say, hey, would you like to practice some speaking questions with me? Take some with you or look them up on your phone. It doesn't matter. But definitely practice your speaking. Use English well before your IELTS speaking interview and not just reading or listening, but actually speaking. Speaking, okay, you got to move your mouth. So speak, speak, speak. Hi, Nitin. Hi, Ravinder. Hi, Balal. Good to see many students there as well. Okay, everyone, and then you register uh, for your speaking interview. You bring the ID that you use to register online. That's very important. And then uh, you go into the room, and the examiner will be there. They will be professional. They could have a British accent, they could have an American accent, Canadian accent. Um, it doesn't matter. They're going to be uh, expert users of the language. And then the very first question that they will ask you is, may I see your identification? So they'll ask you this question. You have to show them your ID. If you don't have it, um, then they'll tell you to leave. Now, when you answer this question, you have to be fluent right away. And that's because um, they're judging you right away. So they are listening to your English from the start. It's not like they only start listening to your English when they ask you the part one questions, okay? You're speaking English with them from the beginning. So from the beginning, you have to show them great English, okay? So, uh, give a full sentence answer. Yes, uh, most certainly. Um, here is my passport that I've used. And if you use present perfect for the first time in this sentence, say the word have. So that I have used for registration. Please have a look or please take a look at my credentials. Okay, so nice, fluent, full sentence answer. Yes, most certainly. Here's my passport that I've used for registration. Please take a look at my credentials. All right. Um, Patel says, yes, certainly. Here's my passport with my credentials. Please have a look. Patel, that's very good. It's Patel Viral or Patel Viral. Anton says, gladly, this is my identification that I used for registration with all my credentials. That's also very good. It's natural. There's a million different ways to answer this question. Just make sure you're fluent, okay? All right. Very good. Okay, so the next question that they will ask you while you're showing your passport, if you're showing them a passport, say it's a passport, okay? If you're showing them a driver's license, you can say it's a driver's license or an ID. If you're showing them national ID card, and you can say it's my national ID card, this is what I use to register, and then go from there. All right, amazing food. He has a speaking exam on the 3rd of January, yeah day after tomorrow. All right, amazing foodie, good luck on that exam. So pay attention because you might be able to gain a few more band scores uh, by watching uh, this uh, lesson and even by using the speaking that we're going to do later. So we're going to actually talk. We're going to speak in a little bit. So what is your full name? That's the next question that comes. What is your full name? So My given name is Carlton and my surname is Johnson. Okay, I'm just making this up. Uh, please uh, call me Carl. It's what I'm used to.
That's what I'm used to being called. Okay. All right. Uh, so again, uh, here you want to definitely, you know, give a full sentence answer. So, uh, what is your full name? My given name is Carlton, and my surname is Johnson. Please call me Carl. It's what I'm used to being called. Nice full sentence answer. Now, students, this is speaking, so please make sure that you're not just listening to me, but make sure to speak and repeat. Okay, so speak and repeat. Copy what I'm saying, copy my intonation, copy my pronunciation. Okay, so speak and repeat. So let's go from the top here. Just copy me. Here we go. Three, two, one. May I see your identification? Yes, most certainly. Here's my passport that I have used for registration. Please take a look at my credentials. What is your full name? My given name is Carlton and my surname is Johnson. Please call me Carl. It's what I'm used to being called. Okay, so that's how it starts. That's how you introduce yourself. Full sentences. Okay, full sentences. All right. Um, Baljeet says, my given name is Singh and my first name is Baljeet. You can just refer to me as Baljeet. Raman Preet says, my full name is Raman Preet and my family name is Kaur. Please call me just Raman. Um, that's strange Raman Preet. We wouldn't say my full name is Raman Preet and my family name is. Then you would just simply say my full name is Raman Preet Kaur. Please call me just Raman. Okay, that would be the natural way. If you say my full name is, you have to give your full name. You wouldn't say and my family name because your family name is part of your full name. Okay, so careful with that. You don't want to make mistakes at the beginning, students. Do not make mistakes during the introduction. It sounds really bad, okay? All right. Uh, Bakra says, uh, my given name is Bakra and my last name is Sharma. Please just call me Bakra. Very good, okay? All right. Um, Andurazak says, my name is Abdurazak, uh, Sulaiman Aliyu, please call me Abdul for short. Yeah, okay, good. And uh, Abdul, you want to say my full name is Abdurazak Sulaiman Aliyu. Okay, very nice name, nice rhythmic harmonic name that you have. All right. Cass says, my given names are Cassandra Erica and my family name is Hermoso, please just call me Cass for short. Very good, Cass. Nice, okay, be fluent. Now, the examiner will say, okay, for part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Where do you live? Okay, again, students, when you're giving answers, think full sentences, okay, full sentences. Uh, give details. give details. Good way to give details is think of explanations. So think answer, explanation, example. Okay. Uh, stay on topic. Okay. All right. So focus on these elements. Okay, so when you have the question, where do you live, uh, think about country, city, residence. Okay, so I live here in Canada, if my interview is in Canada, of course. I live here in Canada in Victoria, which is the capital of the province of uh, British uh, Columbia and I reside in a two uh, bedroom home uh, near the heart of the city. And if I want to be even more specific with the type of home, I could say instead of home, pick up some more lexical resource, 
townhouse. Okay. So where do you live? I live right here in Canada, in Victoria, which is the capital of the province of British Columbia, and I reside in a two-bedroom townhouse near the heart of the city. Nice and fluent, everyone. Okay, nice and fluent. Okay, be specific. Notice the structure. Okay, uh, fame says, I live in Gujarat, which is located in the west of India. It's well known as the land of Mahatma, Mahatma Gandhi. Okay, Fame, instead of telling me that it's well known um, as the land of Mahatma Gandhi, uh, tell me actually where you live, like um, what part of the city and do you live in a house or an apartment. I'm not asking you what your city's famous for, okay? I'm asking you where do you live. So this is what I mean by stay on topic. If you go off topic with the examiner, your score will go down and they will interrupt you and they'll make all kinds of faces like no they shouldn't but some of them do um, okay Amrinder says I live in a three-bedroom house with my family uh, in Jagran which is located in the heart of Punjab in northwestern part of India uh, yeah you don't need to say things like in a city called okay that's we usually don't do that it's not bad English but it's awkward English all right Cass says, I live in Manila, which is the capital city of the Philippines, and I reside in a 150 square meter bungalow with my parents and cousins. Very good. Okay. All right. Um, Amitaj says, I live in Bathinda, which is best known for its lakes. Yeah, again, students, instead of saying what the place is best known for, okay, um, say the type of home that you live in. Okay. So, um, Again, the example here is uh, don't say what your city is known for when you're being asked about uh, where you live. Rather, give details about the type of home that you live in. You'll get a better band score, okay? The more accurate your answers, the better your band score. Keep that in mind, everyone. So the more accurate your answers, the better your band score. And uh, just, uh, you know, the proof is in the pudding, students, I did get a band 9 in my IELTS speaking when I took the exam, and I took it with a Hungarian passport, because I do have two passports and dual citizenship, and so they didn't know I was a native speaker right away, and uh, I did get a band 9, and this is exactly what I was doing, and the uh, examiner was very impressed, okay, so you have to have detail and you have to stay on topic. So the more accurate your answers, the better your band score. Keep that in mind, okay? Exclamation mark. Um, all right. Um, so, uh, next question, we'll do one more here. Um, do you have any hobbies? Okay. This question they really like asking. It's like, what do you like to do in your free time? Um, you know, um, when you have some spare time, what do you do? Uh, do you have any hobbies? It's kind of the same question. Um, yes, I have several. I like to collect uh, coins um, and go for runs in the morning. Um, the former I like because it's because coins uh, tell historical stories and the latter I do to stay fit and get fresh air. In fact, I went for a short jog just before this exam. All right, so that would be the full sentence uh, response with an answer explanation and an example repeat after me do you have any hobbies yes I have several 
I like to collect coins and go for runs in the morning. The former I like because coins tell historical stories and the latter I do to stay fit and get fresh air. Um, in fact, I went for a short uh, jog just before this exam. Okay. Notice that here I'm giving the answer and this is how I create fluency. Okay. Answer and then um, I give an explanation right here. Let's do that all capital, explanation. And then um, just at the very end, I don't say for example or for instance, just give it, right? So uh, right there is the example, okay? Uh, and as long as you have those elements, you're creating fluency, you're giving more vocabulary, you're staying on topic, you're doing a good job. Okay, all right. Nuthan says, well, yes, I do have hobbies, or I do hobbies, okay. I like to play cricket, and sometimes in the weekends, I like to go out for movies. Okay, Nuthan, when's the last time you played a cricket game, or when's the last time you saw a movie? Just give me a quick example, right? So last weekend, I watched um, Don't Look Up, Okay. Uh, Poojan says, of course I have lots of hobbies when I have free time. I love to listen to music and do cooking because it makes me feel refreshed and entertained. Where's your example, Poojan? Okay, I know sometimes it's hard to fit the example, but you want to get it in there. Uh, Patel says, yes, I do have several hobbies. One of them is binge watching movies on Netflix. The other one is listening to BBC News podcasts on my, in my spare time. Okay, so a lot of you are remembering the answer and the explanation, but a lot of you are forgetting the example. Make sure to get that smooth example into your answers also. Okay, so not just the answer and the explanation. It's a good start, but definitely get the uh, example in there as well. All right, students, so now uh, we are going to uh, practice some speaking together, okay? So we're going to hop over to our website here. I'm going to show you exactly what to do, and I'm going to actually reach out to some of our viewers uh, to practice uh, speaking. So the first step um, if you want to do this is to either join our premium package by clicking this red button. Remember we have that very special discount code that I pinned to the top of the chat, the iPass 2022 to get that 30% uh, discount. That's only for the next five days to kind of help you start the new year on a positive note. Um, you can also click this green button to try, well, there's the green button, <laughs> the green button to try that for free as well, okay? And then when you have that, then you'll have this My Student account that's up at the top there, okay? So at the very, very top, you have that uh, My Student account. You click on that My Student account, and then you're brought into all of your learning tools, the computer-based practice exams and all that. And you have lots and lots of HD videos in here as well, okay? Um, one HD video that's especially good, uh, we have lots of uh, mock speaking interview with other candidates from around the world, band 7 to band 9. And you can even practice um, your speaking interview with me. Uh, so, like this, in this karaoke style format. What do you use to make food? Okay, and then you can uh, give answers. So it's kind of like doing a speaking interview with me, but not in real life, okay? So you have time uh, for that, okay? Do you like to cook? Do you like to bake? Why or why not? And if you go full screen like this, then uh, you'll also see the, um, the uh, let's see. Yeah, you'll also see the subtitles there to help you. So I'm just showing you this, students. What's your favorite ingredient? The ingredient that I love above all others has to be tomatoes. There are several types of tomatoes, and this uh, vegetable slash fruit, okay? 
Have you learned to make any special dishes? So you can practice your speaking this way, but right now we're actually going to practice speaking real life, okay? So make sure that you're using this kind of first person video speaking practice on the website, everybody. It's really cool, okay? And we've got, I think, three or four different first person uh, speaking interview practice sessions like this, okay? All right. Um, okay, let me get out of this. What would it be? And uh, we'll go back here. Okay, so that's all the speaking lessons. Okay, that was just a little bit of a side note there. Uh, tons and tons of videos for you. Uh, right now, we're using a different function, though. Right now, we're using this uh, function called student partner speaking. It's this one right here. So when you're in your My Student account, you want to click that student partner speaking and then accept that you're going to be polite and you're responsible for your speaking. And you go to another page, and on this page, uh, you're going to be able to chat with other IELTS students, including me. Uh, you will find me under the name Master, okay? Um, so when you see Master, you can uh, send me a message with a little blue envelope here. Okay, so you click on that little blue envelope, um, and then you can say, I want to volunteer. I think my one just did that. That's why you see that little number one beside my one. And then I can call you. Uh, now make sure that you enable your microphone and your speaker so I can actually uh, talk with you, okay, <clears throat> on your browser. And then I'll ask you a speaking question. Give me an answer, and I'll give you a band score, and we'll analyze it, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. Got a frog in my throat. <clears throat> when your voice gets raspy or cracking like mine just did, we often say, I have a frog in my throat. Okay, so Anir Bond just sent me a message as well, okay? So again, students, uh, aehelp.com, create an account, my student page, student partner speaking, and then send me a message. And there's lots of people sending me messages, so I'm going to call my wand, and we'll see if we can connect with my wand, okay? So my one says, hi, Mr. Master. I'm just Adrian is fine, my one. I would like to volunteer. Okay, my one, let's see if you're ready. Are you ready? All right, so my one was the first out of the gate. My one says, yes, sure. So let me call my one and then uh, we'll get going here. Hi. Hi, my one. How are you? I'm doing good, thank you. How are you doing? Today I'm doing fantastic because of New Year. <laughs> no, awesome. So good. You're starting the year positively, and that's good to hear. Uh, my one, if I'm not mistaken, you have volunteered in the past. Is that correct? Yeah, it is correct. So you know exactly what's happening, right? Yes, I do. All right, perfect. So I'm going to ask you a question and uh, for part one here. Give me a nice full sentence answer and then we'll go over it together, okay? Sure, I will do my best. Awesome. Uh, let's talk about helping people. When do you ask a person for help? Uh, well, interesting. Uh, uh, whenever I'm, I'm in a bad situation and uh, I can uh, get out from uh, the situation that I'm dealing with, uh, at that moment, I will ask for help. Uh, last time uh, I was and uh, uh, I, I need a help and I just called a friend of mine. He helped me to uh, get out from the situation that I, I, I was in. Okay. The situation I was in. Okay. All right, so uh, not bad, not bad, okay? Um, so uh, my one, I would say that uh, that response would get you um, about a six to a 6.5 uh, for your band score. Band six on the IELTS, according to the IELTS band descriptions, is somebody who is fluent, okay? And I can tell that you're fluent, so even though you paused a couple of times, I felt like you were pausing because you were kind of thinking of what should I say, right? Um, so um, I, I don't think you paused too much for vocabulary or grammar, which is fine, so you're fluent. 
However, I wouldn't class that as a good response. So a band seven is when they say it's a good speaker, okay, or it's a good response. Band eight, of course, is very good, and band nine would be expert. Let me tell you why. So let me tell you why I would think that's uh, fluent, but not necessarily good or very good. So you're, you're floating between that 5.5 to 6.5 range. That's why I said six, okay? So you said, well, uh, interesting, and I could tell when you said that, well, interesting, that you're like, okay, when do I ask for help? Um, <clears throat> so then you realize, okay, whenever I'm in a bad situation, okay? Uh, there was some awkward um, grammar. So, for example, here I didn't hear the word am or m, so whenever I am. And also a little bit later, I didn't really hear the T in your can't get out of the situation. So what that means, uh, my wand, is that um, your contractions, when you're contracting the words like cannot into can't, your contraction is not clear. Okay? Mm. Okay. So how can you make sure that on the IELTS that doesn't cause you problems? Best advice, don't use contractions. So if you sometimes have... Over time, and as you use English more, you'll get better, they'll become clearer, but for now, when you're doing the IELTS, just try to avoid them. So say, whenever I am, right? Instead of saying, whenever I'm, just say, whenever I am in a bad situation. Um, and instead of saying, I can't get out, just say, I cannot get out, right? So actually emphasize it, and it's good to do that. Um, it is actually considered more professional to not contract words, okay? Interesting. Sure. Okay, so you can say, well, interesting, whenever I am in a bad situation and I cannot, uh, and then that way there's no mistake, right? I cannot get out of uh, the trouble, let's paraphrase the word situation, the trouble uh, I'm dealing with. Okay, and I like your use of uh, phrasal verbs and expressions like dealing with. I will ask for help. Okay, all right, um, so good, you gave an answer and there's a bit of explanation there as well. Now, your example, you said last time I need help. Um, that would have been last time I needed, because it's past tense. Last time I needed help, I called a friend of mine and he helped me get out of the situation. So notice how it's situation, 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 okay. Uh, what's another way to say situation in this case? Condition, maybe? Mm, keep it simpler, think of the word that starts with a P. P. Yeah. P R O B. P. What's the word? Mm. Problem. Yeah. Right? Problem, yeah. <laughs> okay. Like like I said, keep it simple. So I'm not trying to get a word from you that's like super advanced and you'll never know it. These words are in your head. You just have to resource them, okay? You have to uh, reference them. So, uh, well, interesting. Whenever I'm in a bad situation and I cannot get out of the trouble I'm dealing with, I ask for help. Last time I needed help, I called a friend of mine and he helped me get out of the problem I was in. Okay, the example is a bit weak because I don't actually know the problem that you were in. Okay, uh, what was the problem? Just come up with any kind of problem. I lost my way. Okay, yeah. Sure. So you didn't know you didn't know where you were. Your GPS yeah. wasn't working. You needed to call your friend. So last time I needed help. Okay, I was uh, lost uh, in a rural area. Okay, outside of town. Yeah. And I haven't. I haven't had. I haven't had the sense of direction. Yeah, you can say that, but again, my one, don't overcomplicate unnecessarily. So once you have enough detail, don't give more detail because then you might make more grammar mistakes, you might lose your thoughts, so don't overcomplicate, right? And I hope everybody else is listening here too because these are very common mistakes, so um, you should all be taking note of this to make sure that you avoid this kind of mistake and you stay focused, okay? So here's the question again, the answer, once I finish, just repeat the answer, okay? Sure. All right, so when do you ask a person for help? Well, interesting. Whenever I'm in a bad situation and I cannot get out of the trouble I'm dealing with, I ask for assistance. Last time I needed help, I was lost in a rural area outside of town. I called a friend of mine and he helped me get out of the problem I was in.
Okay, when do you ask a person for help? Well, interesting question. Whenever I'm in a bad situation and I cannot get out of the trouble I'm dealing with, I will ask for help. Last time, I needed help. I, I lost I, I was lost in a rural area outside of my of town. I called a friend of mine and he helped me get out the problem I was in. Much better. Okay. So you want to practice that accuracy. All right, my one. Okay, good. Thank you for being the very, very first volunteer, not just of today, my one, but of 2022. You're the very first speaking volunteer. So <laughs> yeah, congratulations. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> congratulations. Okay. Um, please, everybody, give my one uh, a round of applause. He did a fantastic job sharing his English. Thank you, my one. I hope 2022 goes fantastic for you. Okay. All right. Uh, so we are taking some more volunteers as well. All right. Um, so here I have Anir Ban. Okay. Um, and uh, we have Arsalan and we have Tatiana. Okay, let me reach out to Tatiana. Um, let's do a little bit of switch up to uh, from man to woman here. Let's see if Tatiana is available. So Tatiana, are you ready? Okay, let's see if Tatiana is there. I'm going to, you know, I don't want to be like just from the top to bottom, so I'll kind of randomly pick people. Okay, Tatiana says yes. All right, Tatiana. Hello? Hi, Tatiana. Hello? I can hear you just fine. Can you hear me? Absolutely. That's great. Tatiana, where are you in this beautiful world of ours in 2022? I'm calling you from Moscow, Russia. From Moscow, Russia. Right on. Awesome. And um, you are doing the IELTS exam. That's fantastic. And I'm here to help you, so I will ask you a part one question. Give me a nice full sentence answer, and then I will uh, reflect on your response and give you some advice. Does that sound like a plan? Yes. All right. Okay, so um, again, the topic, let's talk about helping people. How often do you help another person? It's an interesting question. Shall I start? I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Yeah. Uh, I try to help people whenever I have time. Uh, okay, it's an interesting question. I try to help people whenever I have time and energy to do it. Uh, I often help people with uh, questions uh, on English or when they have to find a person to look after their pet or plants. And uh, the last time I helped a person was uh, when my cousin went uh, on holiday to Spain and she needs uh, somebody to keep an eye on her um, pet cat. Uh, Jessica and uh, I popped into her apartment once a few days to make sure the cat is fed up and I changed its drinking water and I also watered the plants. Okay, um, excellent, nice. All right, so let me uh, reflect on uh, your response. All right, that was very good. So first of all, um, your English is very good, so I know it's <laughs> I know it's uh, quite intimidating to do it in front of so many people who are listening and watching. Um, but just be confident because you have great English. So uh, in the IELTS speaking exam, walk in there with confidence and show that fluency. So don't um, don't get stuck because of nervousness. I, I, I just stopped because I noticed you were typing and I didn't know shall I uh, going on speaking or shall I wait for you to type? Just go. <laughs> okay, so okay. Um, so and, and that's a good point because you know a lot of um, a lot of uh, candidates get a little bit confused in the official IELTS exam when they see the examiner doing certain things. Like the examiner will be writing down notes and they'll be marking while they're actually asking you the questions. And sometimes like some examiners will make some strange faces. I've heard students complain that the examiner coughs or starts like going, 
like this, right? So there's a lot of different people in the world with a lot of different behaviors. Um, in the IELTS exam, don't worry about the examiner. As soon as they ask the question, just start talking. Just be fluent. Okay. Don't worry about what they're typing. If they ask you to stop, then of course stop. But if they're not interrupting you, if they're coughing, grunting, laughing, smiling, looking at their paper, looking at the ceiling, spinning in their chair, don't stop. Just finish the answer, okay? Okay, so, understood. Okay. Um, so, uh, so show your fluency. It's quite good. I would say that you're definitely at around a band eight, okay, wow. if, I'm, if I'm looking at your overall because you gave a very good answer. So that would be considered a very good answer. Not quite expert, but close, okay? Um, so even maybe an 8.5, 8, I would say is a safe bet, okay? I'll tell you why. So um, I don't know if I would start this with, that's an interesting question. I don't think- It's not interesting, of course. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's not that much. So, and this oh. is, yeah, so this is for everybody. Using that's an interesting question is more applicable to part three. Um, part one questions generally are not that interesting. They're about hobbies or helping people. They're kind of common everyday questions. Yeah, I was trying to, to buy some time. Yeah, and I, and I felt that. So with your fluency, just, get into it, okay? So um, I try to help people whenever I have time and energy to do it. I think that's a great way to start. Um, use quantitative language, okay? And this is again for everybody. Yeah. So using numbers, um, I would say at least uh, three to four times, and it doesn't have to be the truth, just something believable. So at least four, three to four times a week. Okay. That makes any question that's asking you how often a situation happens, you use numbers, oh, yeah, of course. it always makes it more clear or clearer for the person. So um, you said, I often help people with uh, questions in English or with English, okay, fine. Um, or when they have to find a person to look after their pet or plant. Okay, I thought that was clever. Um, sure. Um, and then you said, the last time I helped someone was my cousin when they went to Madrid. Um, I helped to keep an eye on her pet cat. I like how you use this idiom, keep an eye. Okay, um, keep an eye. Uh, that idiom means a uh, one word um, to keep an eye on. Uh, do you know what that word is? Which what is the word that it's replacing? Uh, sorry. So keep an eye on is on, on, yeah. Keep an eye on somebody or something means to look after somebody or something. So look after is the phrasal verb. Keep an eye on is the idiom. What's the exact uh -huh. verb? Uh, well, to care. Uh, mm -hmm. well. Yeah, or one that starts with an SUP. SUP support. Supervise. Supervise. So you supervise or monitor. Okay, supervise is the more accurate. Yeah, so it's a good way to learn um, idioms, phrasal verbs, and exact verbs, right? Exact verbs are always those higher level verbs for those idioms and phrasal verbs. So keep an eye on, look after, supervise, right? Um, and uh, yeah, then it's fantastic, okay? So if you are able to include that bit of quantitative language, um, then, um, and careful with your explanation or your example not to go too, too far. I think it started to get a little bit long and you might get interrupted if you're going into a lot of, like a longer story. So what I would say, you know, for that Definite band nine, this is what it should sound like, okay? So I'll read mm -hmm. the question, the answer, and then um, I'll ask you the question again. So how often do you help another person? I try to help people whenever I have time and energy to do it. I would say at least three to four times a week. I often help people with questions with English or when they have to find a person to look after their pet or plant. Um, a couple months ago, my cousin went on a trip to Madrid and I helped keep an eye on her pet cat. She was grateful. Okay, so that's it. Um, how often okay. do you help another person? Uh, I help people whenever I have time and energy to do it. Uh, I'd say three or four times a week. Last time I helped my cousin when she went uh, when she went to, on holiday to Madrid. I helped her to keep an eye on her pet cat, uh, and uh, I popped it to her flat and make sure the cat is okay. 
Okay, that was good. One little missing element there was you missed the explanation a little bit. So I often help people with questions with English or um, when um, they need a person. So you missed that part, but that's okay. You'll get it yeah. next time, I'm sure. Just keep that um, keep that structure always in mind. So answer, explain, example. Answer, explain, example. Okay? Yeah, it takes practice. It does, yeah. It seems simple, and it is, but it's not necessarily easy. That's always what I tell people. Simple yeah, is not necessarily said easy. Than done. <laughs> it is easier said than done, absolutely, um, especially quickly in real time. Um, that was awesome. So, Tatiana, thank you for giving us uh, that uh, nice English of yours, and uh, have an awesome 2022. Thank you very much. You too. Okay. Bye, Tatiana. Bye-bye. Okay, everybody give Tatiana uh, an applause, some thumbs up. Um, she was our first female volunteer of 2022. That was fantastic. Thank you so, so very, very much uh, for sharing your English. By the way, everyone, uh, volunteering in these live classes, uh, sharing your English, it's a great way to build your confidence and you're really helping your peers as well. The mistakes that you make, others make them as well. Um, okay, uh, everybody can improve their speaking and communication. Okay, um, let's take uh, someone else. So, um, let's go down. The, I'm kind of looking for some new people as well for the new year here. Let me go up to the top. Um, Anirban, I think, has been waiting patiently. So let's see if I can reach out to Anirban. Okay, Anirban, are you ready? And students, uh, if you like this kind of speaking, you can book a full speaking interview with me um, by uh, clicking the speaking interview uh, yellow button in your My Students account, okay? So Anirban is ready, and uh, let's reach out to Anirban. Hi, Anirban. Sounds like you picked up, but I don't hear you. It could be your internet connection or it could be uh, enabling the microphone or the speaker on your end. Okay, so students, when you're using this, um, make sure that you practice with some other students as well, just to make sure that your system is working, okay? All right, Anirban, maybe try um, with another student, uh, contact them, see if um, it works on your end, and then you can figure out if it's the internet connection or if it's maybe some settings uh, for your audio devices, okay? And I'll get back to you at a later time for sure, so no worries, okay? Yeah, I can see you said, okay, next time. All right, um, let's try Arslan. Okay. Uh, our salon, sure. Are you ready? Okay. As long as our salon is still here, yes, our salon's still here. Okay. Um, all right, our salon, here we go. Hello. Hi, our salon. How are you? I'm doing good, thank you. How are you doing? Uh, I'm super. <laughs> You're super. Awesome. So 2022 is off to a good start? Yes. Okay. Did you wait for the New Year's? Did you wait for midnight? Um, actually, 2022 started for me um, 21 hours ago. Okay. Yeah, so you're way ahead of me. It started for me less than eight hours ago. So where are you? I'm in Kazakhstan. You're in Kazakhstan. Okay, awesome. Okay, um, so uh, I will ask you a part one question and then uh, I will analyze it and um, give you some tips. Um, are you ready? Of course. Okay, let's do this. So, uh, we are still talking about uh, helping people, and here's the question. Where are good places for you to seek help? Um, 
there are many places that I can uh, show my help um, and one of the most common place is at school it is a school um, there are many people who ask me to solve a problem or to um, help with learning something and I will at least try to help them to uh, be good at it uh, and last time I helped the school was actually um, before holidays um, we had many exams and many of my classmates asked me to um, why is it important to help people so I'm I have to be a little bit rude here and I'm sorry about that but I, I have to interrupt you um, why do you think I'm interrupting you and I probably, to be honest with you, I actually would have, in the real exam, I would have interrupted you um, earlier. Um, why do you think I'm interrupting you? I've spoken a lot. No, that's actually not the reason. You were starting to speak a lot, but that's not the actual reason that I would interrupt you. And that's why I said I would actually interrupt you a bit earlier in the real exam. Uh, I'm off topic, yeah. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you got it. Good. Um, so let me ask you the question again. Where are good places for you to seek help? What do you think the word seek means in this case? Uh, to find help. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So you were telling me where you give help and you're saying that you give help at school. It's good that you understood that I'm asking for a location, like where, right? Um, but I wasn't asking where you give help. I was asking where you find help. And interestingly, you do know all the words in the question. You just didn't catch it the first time. So if you're not absolutely sure what the question was, it's better to ask for a repeat than to speak off topic, okay? Be confident. So when you feel like, okay, I got that question for sure, then just give the answer. Don't, you know, don't say, can you repeat that? But when you feel like, uh, I'm not 100% sure what that question was actually asking me then just say I'm sorry I was a bit nervous there can you repeat that question and then I'll say sure where are good places for you to seek help okay and then you'll give a better answer do you want to try that again yes all right uh, where are good places for you to seek help there are many places that I can find a help or a support and one of the common places uh, where people uh, try to help me is my home. Uh, my family members, I think the best people who can support me uh, at any time and who can solve me, uh, solve, solve my problems um, quickly and easily. Um, actually, uh, the day before Christmas, I had exams and I was very nervous about it, but my mom gave me mental support. He, uh, she, she told me that um, everything would be okay, and I haven't. Why is it important to help people? Okay, so I'm interrupting you again because you're giving, going too too far, but uh, so you're giving too much of an answer. You should have just stopped when you said my my mom gave me mental support. Just stop there. That's enough. You don't need to. So don't over exemplify okay so pay attention to that so two very important tips for you one make sure you're answering the right question and two with your example don't keep talking you have to stop when you feel like you've given the example and then wait for the next question otherwise they're going to interrupt you and the problem is if i interrupt you it will be even that much harder to understand the next question because i'm interrupting you with it Do you see what i mean so it's like a double negative in that case is that clear? Yes. Okay, so uh, let me give you some ideas of band scores. So the first time you answered, your band score would be a 4.5 at best of five. Why? Because you're going off topic, so you're losing band scores. If you're speaking off topic, that really hurts your score, okay? Because it, it's considered an incoherent answer, okay? Your second answer, where you started talking about the correct place, would be a band 6.5. So big difference. We're talking like a 1.5 to 2 band difference, being off topic and on topic. Okay, So that's why you want to ask for a repeat if you're not 100% sure. 
Um, and if you stop your example, you're going to get a 6.5 for sure because your answer is quite accurate. You make some small grammatical mistakes, but they're not confusing, and you do use good vocabulary, complex grammar. Um, so uh, your vocabulary and your grammar are quite good. Your fluency is a little bit on the slow side, but it's not awkward. Okay, so um, you said there are many places that I can find help or support. You don't need to uh, repeat the same word so that I can find support. Uh, one of the uh, common places where people try to help me is my home. My family members, I think, are the best to support me at any time. And then I, I put dot, dot, dot because I heard kind of another repetition there. So you repeated that same idea again that you find support at home. So don't repeat, okay? Um, they can help me quickly and easily. Actually, the day before Christmas, I had exams and I was very nervous about it. My mom, uh, then you said he, and then you corrected to she. That was a good correction, okay, that you corrected the he to a she. Examiners, native English speakers, will always catch that he, she mistake, okay? Um, so <clears throat> my mom, uh, she gave me uh, mental support. Okay, and I really like that expression that you use there. My mom, uh, she gave me mental support. Okay, and then it's great. As long as you say that fluently, you're going to get a band 7, 7.5 even. Okay, so a bit of practice and you'll get there because I think you have strong foundations. Um, when the question is plural, like places, ideally for a band 9, you want to give 2 two places, so the home and maybe school, right? Or the home and the internet, okay? So let me ask this question, give an answer, and then you can copy me after. Does that sound good? Yes. Okay, so where are good places for you to seek help? There are many places that I can find support, um, either online or at home. Um, in my house is a common place uh, where people help me. My family members, I think, are the best. Um, they helped me quickly and easily. Actually, the day before Christmas, I had exams. I was really nervous. My mom, she gave me mental support. Okay, so try that or something similar. Okay, um, where are good places for you to seek help? Uh, there are many places that I can find support. Uh, one of the common places where people try to help me is a my home or the internet my family members i think are the best to support me at any time they can help me quickly and easily and actually the best uh, the, the day before christmas i had exams and i was very nervous about it my mom uh, she gave me mental support very good. All right. So that would actually be, so if you said that exactly when I asked you the question the first time, I would have said that's an 8.5 to a band 9 even. Okay. Uh, your pronunciation, by the way, is fantastic. Very nice pronunciation. Very clear. Okay. Um, okay. So practice that. All right. Really pay attention to the question. All right. Yes. Okay. And I hope you have a fantastic 2022 and I will keep my fingers crossed that you get an awesome IELTS band score. Thank you very much. Okay, Arsalan, have a great rest of the day. Good luck. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, so that was Arsalan. Uh, give Arsalan an applause. Very brave again. You know, I can feel the tension and the nerves, but that's a great way to build confidence. Public speaking is scary. Uh, psychologists say that it's uh, the same level of fear for public speaking as going into battle into a battlefield. So it's definitely intimidating, but the way to overcome your fear is to charge it head on. All right. So uh, let's take another volunteer. Here we go, everyone. We'll do one more. We'll take one more volunteer here. Uh, we have Nuthan Kumar, Amrinder, Rupinder, Abdul Razak, I believe, is one of our members. Let's see if Abdul Razak is. Uh, here with us today. Let's uh, pick a member. So Abdul Razak says, hi Adrian, I want to volunteer. Let's try Abdul Razak. So are, I think it was just Abdul. Are you ready? Okay, maybe we can reach Abdul Razak. 
All right. And thank you for the applauses, everyone. I see um, Cass and uh, Simran and others applauding. That's fantastic. Let's see if Abdul Razak is still here with us. Hopefully, Abdul, you can... Yeah, okay, there it is. All right. <clears throat> okay, Abdul Razak, I'm going to reach out to you. Hopefully, we're able to connect. Hello, Abdul Razak. I hear that you picked up, but I cannot hear your voice. I'm not sure if you enabled your microphone. You might have to check your microphone settings. I'll give you a brief moment here. Again, students, um, use this uh, speaking a student partner speaking function on the website with other students just to check your system and also make sure that um, there aren't any filters at the national level. I know that some countries are not able to use certain chat programs like WhatsApp or Skype. Uh, so um, like India cannot use TikTok, for example. So you have to check that, okay, and test it out. So make sure you test it, and then in the next class, I'll look for you, okay? So Abdul Razak, I can't hear you, um, but test the system uh, in the next day or two, and then um, next Wednesday when we start, if I see you, just remind me and I'll try to reach out to you again, okay? All right. Uh, so let me try Nutan. All right, Nutan says, I want to volunteer. Okay, Nutan, are you ready? Let's see if we can reach Nutan, which I believe in English would be Nathan. Let's see if Nuthan Kumar is there. Okay, Nuthan says, yes, sir. All right, Nuthan. So I'm calling you. Hi, Master. Hi, Nuthan. How are you? I'm very good. How are you, Master? <laughs> just call me Adrian. Master, we just sure. use when we're programming, okay? Um, okay. <laughs> all right, Nuthan. Um, I'm doing good, thank you. 2022 is off to a fantastic start for me. I had a great night's sleep. So, um, and where are you right now, Nuthan? Nice. Uh, I'm from India, Bangalore. Bangalore. All right. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. So I had a good uh, New Year yesterday with my family. So we had a 25 people gathering and had a nice party. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. so obviously you guys are very uh, ambitious that COVID is no longer too much of an issue, right? Uh, not like that really because we gathered it into a particular place like in my uncle's place. So we didn't go outside for a party. I see. So it I see. just was in house. We didn't go outside. Well, I'll, I'm on, Nutan, I'm on the same page as you. I really hope that in 2022 we can uh, get past this pandemic and get kind of back to this more normal way of life where we get to see each other, party, dance and have fun. So I'm, I'm <laughs> on the right. same page. I'm on the same page. <laughs> That's right. I, even I'm waiting for it very soon so that I can move out around. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question here, Nutan. Give me a nice full yes. sentence answer and then um, I'll analyze what you say. So, uh, again, we're talking about helping people, okay? Yes. All right. Um, here's the next question. Okay. Why, why is it important to help people? Oh. It's very much important to help people, really, I say that, because uh, I can give you two instances, one at the bank and one at the one for the medical support. Uh, for example, uh, for, for instance, I can give, uh, like in India, we had a demonetization. So in that demonetization, there are very old people who move, go for bank to demonetize their currencies, like they want to change their currencies that time so it is very much trouble for that uh, old people that they have to stand in a long queue like 30 to 40 people of 100 people around so but no one over there helping them to move go fast but so but these people should mind that there are old people and we have to give them uh, the first preference have so the way people see. help each other so again yeah, I'm, I'm interrupting you right so I'm interrupting yeah. you uh, for the same reason as I was interrupting I believe Arslan um, it's because your example is stretching too too far okay yeah, so uh, let me give you some feedback okay first of all I think that you would score like a band 
mm, 5.5 would be my estimate, which you're probably thinking, oh, it's really low, 5.5, but why? I speak English. Um, and, I, and I recognize that you speak English. It's just a bit confusing for me. So you speak very fluently. Your fluency was like a band nine, even. Okay, you're speaking very quickly. But just speaking very quickly without making too much sense will not be able to um, result in a high band score. Okay? okay, so my first tip to you is speak slower, speak clearer, speak with more structure. Okay, so slower. Okay. Slower is better. Okay, okay. All right, so speak slower and uh, think about your explanation. So you, okay. you gave me an answer, but instead of an explanation you tried to explain your idea by giving me just an example and you got into this very complicated um, example with banks and the medical field okay yeah. simplify your thoughts so slower and simpler okay so okay um, and that's why a lot of your phrases and a lot of your sentences were just awkward English, okay? Um, like okay. saying no one over there is just awkward English, okay? So okay. So, so don't do that. So um, it's vital uh, to aid people in times of need uh, because um, the person may also... Uh, need uh, someone's help at a different time. Yeah. Right? Also, helping others leads to uh, more success overall in society. Uh, when um, I help uh, a sick uh, person, like my brother, uh, when he caught the flu. Uh, he will also likely help me in the future. Uh, there's a nice idiom for uh, feeling sick. Um, do you know that idiom, the feeling sick? Um. Something about the weather, using the word weather. Do you know it? No, it's cold. No, when you feel under the weather. Okay, the so weather. help me in the future uh, when I feel under the weather. Okay. okay, under the weather means, I'm just teaching you an idiom here, means uh, to feel sick. So uh, keep it simple, right? Um, so okay. here we go. I'll read the question, you read the answer. Why is it important to help people? It's vital to aid people in times of need because the person may also need someone's help at a different time. Uh, also, helping others leads to more success overall in society. When I help a sick person, like my brother when he caught the flu, um, he will also likely help me in the future when I feel under the weather. Okay. okay. Why is it important to help people? It is why it's vital to aid people in times of need because the person may also need someone's help at a different time. Also, helping others leads to more... Uh, uh, more uh, overall in society, more success overall in society. When I help a sick, per sick person, like my brother when he caught a flu, he will also help me in the future when I feel under the weather. Okay, that would be fantastic. You're still going fast. So slow it down, more attention to accuracy. Slower, more accuracy. Okay. That's the most important, okay? Okay. All right, keep it up because you have good English. I recommend writing down um, what you're speaking. So record yourself on your phone, listen to it, okay. write it down, correct it, and say it, okay? Slower is okay. faster, okay? Okay, okay, Adrian, thank you for the suggestion. All right, Nutan, thank you so much for volunteering, and I hope 2022 continues to be just awesome for you. Thank you so much. I know you two have a great year. Thank you. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Okay, so that was Nutan. Everybody give Nutan uh, applause there. That was awesome. And Nutan will be the last volunteer of today. But again, students, if you liked this speaking practice, you can book a full speaking interview practice with me by clicking this button. And again, everyone, uh, we have a special discount code um, to start off the year. Happy and helpful 
uh, to everyone as well. So uh, you can use this discount code on our websites to save 30%. I pass uh, 2022 because we want all of you to pass your IELTS exams in 2022 with high band scores. So use that um, discount code on our websites to get access to our premium IELTS package. Tons of help there for you, including those uh, videos where you can practice your speaking uh, in first-person perspective. Um, thank you to our members. Thank you, Nuthan, Cass, Small, Andre, for all the support. Andre, I do see that you got that um, expression under the weather, which is fantastic. Carolina, thank you so much again for um, helping out with the chat. That's super great. Uh, students, I will be back on Wednesday and I will be posting our next week's schedule on our YouTube channel. So make sure to subscribe. Um, I'll be back on Wednesday with more speaking to start off the week. So if you didn't have a chance to volunteer today, if I missed you today, come back again on Wednesday um, as you will have another chance then. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from beautiful Victoria here on the west coast of Canada starting off 2022 with lots of energy and uh, wishing everybody good health. Bye for now. See you in a few days.